Hello and welcome to another Ruby on Rails speedrun thing. I don't know why I'm doing this, but you guys seem to like the last one, so I've got another weird idea. Today we're going to be trying to create a quick little chess game where you can like play against your friend over, over the keyboard or whatever, and maybe you can expand on it later. We'll be using some JS libraries for this, and uh, yeah, just trying to see how fast we can do this. I'm going to go ahead and start the timer, and then uh, hopefully get it to work. There we go. And then admit that I've never used live split before, or, uh, you know, I really don't actually know what I'm doing here. So I'm just going to create a new Rails project and then try and figure out what I'm going to do. Uh, the first thing I'm going to need is a chessboard JS, which I was looking into the other day. And hopefully I can come in here. Uh, I think we can just probably pin this. So we'll CD into our video and then we'll go ahead and get started. So the first thing we need to do is we'll have to do like a Rails G uh, controller. We'll say this is a game page where you can play. So it's a game controller with a play. We'll then do a bin slash import map where we uh, do a pin for chessboard JS. Uh, and I think that also needs a, uh, I think the other one was like chess.js. So let's do bin import uh, chess.js. That's going to be for our AI. So this one's for our board. This one's for our AI. Uh, not really our AI. It's like our small little engine that gives us some answers when we try and do some stuff. It, it checks for legal moves. Uh, and then the last thing we were going to need is jQuery, but we can do that in a second here. So let's go ahead and let's do a code dot to open this up. So basic idea is the chessboard JS is going to give us this chessboard right here. And then the chess.js is going to tell us which moves are legal and allow us to move our pieces and stuff. Uh, but first we have to go into layouts, application.html, and then we have to search up a jQuery CDN. And we'll grab this one and we'll just grab one of these, I don't know, minified, sure, copy it, paste it into our application layout, close this page, never look at it again. Then we're going to do a Rails G stimulus and we'll call this chess. And then we can do a Rails S to start the server. Now that we have our chess uh, page, we can go into play.html.erb and we'll open up some Ruby code. I'll bump up the font size so you can actually read this and I'll do a content tag, a div empty string because there's no content, a ID of, I think, board. Then we need some data. This data is going to be a controller. And the controller is going to be for the chess controller that we just created with stimulus. Uh, and then the last thing we're going to need, I think, is going to be a style with a width of about 400 pixels. So that takes care of that. Now, one thing I do remember is uh, when I was looking at this, it didn't really work. So we're going to have to search for the uh, chess.js uh, GitHub repository, which is still in my history. So here's the chess.js GitHub repo. And in here, we need to come into, actually, it's going to be your, the chess, chess board JS GitHub. We need to come in here. And in here, we need to go into the lib and the CSS because it wasn't copying over the CSS properly. Uh, probably something to do with how I'm importing it, but that's fine. We'll go into our style sheets application.css and we'll just paste this at the bottom. That'll give us a bunch of cool styles that we can use. I'm going to go ahead and refresh this and then I'm going to open up my routes.rb and I'm going to change this get to a root and the slash to a hash so that we have a home page that's on this uh, play page. Now we can go ahead and scroll in. And uh, we should see that we have a chessboard somewhere in the body. Hopefully, it looks like we do, but we don't have any content yet. So let's go into our chess controller. And inside of our chess controller, what we're going to do is we're going to import uh, chess from chess.js. And then we're going to import, actually, I think this needs to be like this. And then we're going to import ch uh, chess board from, and then hopefully uh, I can get some help here from my GitHub Copilot. Once that's done, we're going to go ahead and do a console.log connected just to make sure this is working. Refresh, we are connected. So we did import everything properly. And now we can figure out how we're going to do this, this board. Uh, I think on the chessboard.js, they have an example here. Let's just go ahead and try this real quick. We're going to change this to a let because it's kind of cringe to have that be a var. And then we'll go ahead and not refresh this, but we'll refresh this page. Okay, so that's working, but now we're missing some images here from uh, image, chess pieces, Wikipedia, whatever this is. So what we're going to do is we're just going to try to open one of these images in a new tab. It looks like that worked. So what I'm actually going to do is right click new tab on the pawn and then in our explorer, I'm going to come up to our assets images. I'm going to create a new folder, call this pieces, and then I'm going to right click this and reveal an explorer 
which is going to give me the Windows file path for my WSL instance. And I can then grab that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Save As. And I'm going to save this under this directory. Go into Pieces. I'm going to save this as a white pawn like that. And then I'll close this. Now I can right click Save As on the Rook. And it should save in the same directory. Then we can do the Knight. We can do the Bishop. I'll have a link to all of these in the video description, maybe as like a zip file or something. Or maybe I'll just upload this as a GitHub repo so that you don't have to like bombard this person's uh, website. I just don't know a fast way to get these pieces. So I'm just going to steal them like this. That was the Knight, the Bishop, the Queen, and the King. So that should give us all of the pieces. Looks about right. I don't like that this one is a duplicate though. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And then hopefully we're good there. Now that we have that, we uh, should be good to go. So what I'm going to do instead of uh, putting all the code in here is I'm going to go over to the example section, the integration section, and I want the highlight legal moves, I think. I'm going to grab all of this and I'm going to do something that nobody can ever tell any of the Rails devs because they all love stimulus so much. I'm just going to paste this all down here uh, and I'm going to change the uh, IDs for all of these to be the board because that's what we called it. So we'll go ahead and we'll save that and then we'll refresh the page. Uh, and it's looking for my board still. So let me find my board and replace that ID with just the word board. And then I'll go ahead and refresh. So we're still running into issues with our images. And that's because we have to, uh, I think we have to change like this right here to be, uh, I want to say piece themes or piece theme, piece theme. Okay. So we need to have it be slash assets slash, uh, actually it should just be assets slash chess pieces. I called this pieces though, uh, slash, and then the piece itself. So we'll do that. We'll come in here, we'll refresh. Now we're getting some of these, but we're still missing the black pawn. So let me go ahead and save the black pawn in here. There we go. Come in here and refresh. And now we have all of our pieces. Let me scroll out a bit. Okay, so now we have all of our pieces, but we can't actually drag and drop. And the reason for this is game over is not a function. And what I realized while I was going through this is they're currently refactoring the chess.js uh, to use camel case instead of the underscore. So everywhere we have an underscore, we're gonna have to figure out what the function name is. To figure this out, I'm just going to do a cons or I'm gonna do a window.game equals game. I'm gonna save that, refresh, try to drag something, and then I can do game. And now what I can do is check if uh, is game over. Yeah, game over is what the function's called. So I'm gonna grab that and replace this is game over. And then I'm gonna check for any other underscore functions. It doesn't look like there are any. So I'll save this, refresh, and now I should be good to at least try to drag. Now, of course, after I try to drag, it's running into an issue when I try to drop. Uh, I don't quite know why though. So we're gonna have to go in here and figure out what's happening. Uh, unfortunately, this is where things start to get a little bit tricky because, uh, yeah, it's it's kind of old libraries that I'm using here, but that's fine. We have our board set to null. Uh, maybe we should get rid of this. We'll change this for a let board for now. We have all of these pieces. That's fine too. Our board is fine. Board is fine. Uh, our background. Um, what happens? What happens? We're going to need to do... Uh, we'll have to do a game over check at some point, but I don't think we need it right now. Uh, maybe our moves aren't valid. Is that what could be happening? That is entirely possible. What does our game look like? Our game is just a new chess object. That's fine too. Uh, let's see. We are checking for the uh, is game over. That seems fine. Uh, actually, I don't know if is game over is the right thing. I'm, I'm being dumb. What we're going to do instead is we're going to refactor this. We're going to do something like if, uh, and then we'll say if game over, and then we'll just go ahead and create this function. And then we'll just say if game over return false, that seems fine. And then we'll do a function game over. And then in here, what we want to do is we want to do a if game dot, and I don't remember what this is, if game dot checkmate, if game dot is checkmate. Okay. If game dot is checkmate, then we want to say uh, not a, uh, maybe yeah we'll do an alert. 
we'll do an alert and then we'll uh, return true afterwards. We'll say return true. Then we'll do another check to see if game dot is draw. If it is a draw, we'll do an alert to say it's a drawn position and then we can return true. So if if it's a checkmate, return the player and then say they are in checkmate. Okay, so if it's black's turn and black is in checkmate, it'll then say uh, black is in checkmate. That makes sense. We'll come in here, we'll refresh. Now let's try this, it's still not working. Uh, it seems like the drag is working, but the drop is not working. So it has a problem with the drop for some reason. What could that be? Um, let's see. Uh, oh, well, maybe it's this. Let's comment out this promotion and see if that fixes it. Yeah, okay, so it was the promotion. So now I can move pieces at least. That seems to be working. I can't move two on the same turn. I can take pieces. That seems fine. Uh, let me just quickly do something like this. It's going to be a little bit contrived, but you're not here to see chess, so that's fine. And then I'll just do this. Uh, and there we go. Game over. B is in checkmate. So we now have the ability to do a checkmate. Let's see if we can do a draw. So let's do something like this. And then let's keep going. This is going to take a while because we have to have a threefold repetition to make this work, which means we have to try to repeat moves three times. Game over, draw in position. OK, so now in theory, we have a working uh, little chess game that we can use here. You could, of course, come in here. Uh, I guess I could probably stop the timer, but it doesn't matter. I'll include a little bit of a tutorial in here. Uh, you could, of course, come in here and like check out some of the other examples they have where they do something like you make a random move if it's uh, Black's turn or something. I think that's uh, play a random computer. And then all you do in here is you grab the make random move function. I'll just paste that in here. And then whenever you get to the uh, like turn for the uh, player, I guess, you just pop in the make random move. So this is for the random computer. And then what we can do is we can check on drop, uh, then we make the random move. So on drop, after this, after the check, we do this. Let's see if this works. Let me refresh. I do a play, and then black does a random move. There we go. It'll do another random move. And then hopefully I can get a checkmate off here. And then if I click, it says that's a checkmate. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to stop the timer because uh, I feel like we've pretty much done what we set out to do here. Now, from this point, you could, of course, put like an API request to the back end so that you could keep track. Uh, if the like current user has won the game, you could, of course, replace the uh, like whose turn it is instead of just doing the make random move call here. You could do something like uh, when you finish your turn, it does an API request to let the other person know it's their turn. And then you just pass back and forth whoever's turn it is based on like a, uh, I don't know, some kind of, of, of async await maybe. But yeah, hopefully this is interesting. Uh, I'm going to probably just upload this as like a raw video because I think this is pretty funny how fast this was done. Uh, of course, it is pretty, pretty cheaty because it's using like... Uh, you know, a couple different libraries, but still I feel like for 12 minutes and for what it is, it's still pretty neat. So hopefully you thought this was interesting and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.